software update in IoT is in general not, of course, only firmware update. And it's in fact not only about update, it's also about installing additional capabilities. So in some IoT scenarios, in vehicles, for instance, and head units, even in the smart home, you might even have app-like scenarios. So you're adding functionality, you're adding apps to your existing IoT stack, and you might even remove them. So it's about updating firmware, updating software, installing or uninstalling software. All of that we have in IoT. And what we believe and what we figured out over the years doing IoT projects, that especially on the back-end side, updating software in the IoT context is very domain independent. So obviously, if you have a connected sensor or you have a connected vehicle inside the device, that is a huge difference. Having one embedded control unit, one bootloader is a completely different thing than updating a vehicle, where at the end of the day, you might have 50, 60, or 70 devices inside the vehicle that can be updated. That is a completely different game. But if you are in the back end, from the back end perspective, at the end of the day, it's bringing a device and a piece of software together. And this in a very secure, reliable uh, way um, of doing so. So that is what we figured out. And what we also figured out and learned throughout our journey was actually different or multiple software iterations in the back end throughout. We learned a lot, actually, how to do software updates in IoT and how not to do it. In fact, we tried this several times, so we failed. I don't know, maybe not always fast enough, but we failed several times. And we came up with a list of requirements that we figured out uh, that you have in that domain. So if we start on the top left side, I think, uh, tactical scalability, that is what is, was also mentioned this morning. That is today, in these days, delivered by cloud platforms uh, by means that, okay, you need to scale up. If you're updating just 50 devices, you don't need many resources, but then you might start a software update roll out for, let's say, 100,000 devices. You need the technical scalability to have the network bandwidth, storage, CPU capacity to, to handle that on a global scale. But even more interesting in software update becomes what we call now functional scalability, means the capability uh, to be able to fully control such a software rollout. So, for instance, if you're updating again 100,000 devices, let's even say 100,000 vehicles, there will be no guy in the world who pushes a big red button and then it all starts. The risk and, of course, also the cost on the infrastructure side, even if you have a cloud that is able to scale up that much, you might even still, you don't want to take the risk that after the fifth device, you already figure out, okay, there was actually a mistake. We made something wrong. We broke the device, but you can't stop it anymore because you already told the rest of the 100,000, please update. So what you want to do is you want to have this entire process completely under control. Another very important point is entry and security. So we talked, we already heard a lot from, from Jörg and also this morning about the different layers of security that you typically have in IoT or in IT in general. Parameter security, you want to have encryption, authentication, authorization. You want to have all that, but you want to have even more. You want to have that a device trust the software, that a device can prove and device can figure out that the software has been signed by the person or the process or the system that was valid to do so. You want to have end end security from the point where the software was created that you want to bring to your device down to the device itself. That is what we mean in this context with end to end security. You want to have in IoT, and actually that is actually where we had most of our failures in the very beginning, where we tried to set up some kind of standard. We tried to figure out, okay, this is the way how we use software. This is the way how devices are connected to the backend. And then we figured out, and unfortunately, in reality, it is not that way. We have many, many different ways how devices are connected. Different transport channels, different protocols. Sometimes you can define the protocol from the cloud side. Sometimes the device vendor is defining the protocol. There is actually a whole garden of standards out there. OMADM, tr 69 libidm to m Unfortunately, all of these are basically niche players still. So there are standards, but none of them is so big that you might call, okay, this is the one standard we, you know, we put all our bets on. So you, know, you need a lot of flexibility to integrate. You need a very good reliability because software update is the one thing that basically can fix every problem that you have. You have a device that 
is not working anymore correctly, you have maybe even a security problem out there, software update can fix this. But what if software update breaks? Then you're basically lost, and you're based in day one before you were even connected. And there's this also a lot about keeping your API stable. So let's say you have a connected device, but actually it's never connected. It's sold, maybe put on some shelf, maybe even installed, and then five years after it was manufactured, connected for the first time. So what are you going to do? For sure, your cloud has changed. For sure, your backend, your IoT applications have changed. But there's one thing that better does not have changed, and that is software update. You need to keep that stable uh, to be sure that you can at least bring the device to the current state of art so that it can connect back to the cloud and you can integrate in your system. And of course, we learned a lot about device complexity. Again, connected sensor versus a, connect, versus a connected vehicle. Pretty, pretty big difference, and you, you need to be able to handle this. And we came out with a solution for that. That's actually my product, uh, Bosch IoT Rollouts. Uh, that is part of Bosch IoT Suite. I will not go into every detail now. Just two important things um, what I want to mention here. I mentioned flexibility. At the same time, you also want to have a very good user experience from day one of using the service. So what we came up with, um, again, a lot of lessons learned there. On one side, on the right side, you can see two APIs, management API and device management federation API. And that's basically a very flexible way you can say, OK, I take the rollout management capability of how to update software, but I still have the flexibility to integrate that into my IoT solution, integrate that into my maybe even already existing device connectivity, into my defined connectivity standards. But on the left side, you see two interfaces, a graphical user interface and what we call the Direct Device Integration API. And that basically gives you the option to use this rollout service without having to write a line of code. You can directly connect the device to the service, use the UI, start your rollouts, you're good to go. And in fact, in the smart home scenario, we use the system exactly like that. However, usually from my, or from my experience, in most IoT projects, it's more or less the combination of those two. And in fact, the rollout services supports all four of these interfaces in the same 